What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 26.1 Beta 1 to register developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, we also got the first beta for iPadOS 26.1, watchOS 26.1, macOS Tahoe 26.1, tvOS and HomePod version 26.1 along with VisionOS 26.1 beta 1. But of course in this video we are talking all about iOS 26.1 beta 1 and everything new in the update. So starting off with the size, it came in at a really large 14.16 gigabytes. I believe that's the largest software update size I've seen. However, it did download and install very quickly. So let's go ahead and check out this new build number here for this new update. So if we head into our settings, go into general, and then into about, the new version is 23B. 5044L. So we are expecting a few betas for 26.1 until we see that official release, which we'll talk about when to expect that later on in this video. So if we go down and scroll down to the modem firmware, that is 1.10.00 for the iPhone 17 series. I installed this on my 17 Pro Max. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 26.1 beta one? And the first thing has to do with everybody's favorite feature, Apple intelligence. So if we go into our settings and go into to Apple Intelligence in Siri, we now have added language support for Apple Intelligence. So it's now available in Danish, Dutch, Norwegian, Portuguese, Swedish, Turkish, Chinese traditional, and Vietnamese. And I know some of those languages were supposed to already come out long ago, but Apple did kind of delay some of those. But now, if you are somebody who speaks that language, if you live in one of those countries, you will now have access to Apple intelligence. Now, this update also brings added language support for AirPods live translation. So if you pull up your AirPods, we go into here, and then we scroll down, and we go down to the new translation feature, which is in beta right now, and you go into languages. This is, of course, where you can can do you know the real-time translation for voice this is now available in new languages as you can see they're down here now you just have to download these so the new ones are going to be Japanese Korean and Chinese both Mandarin traditional and simplified Chinese and just as a side note if you've not tried out the live translation feature on your AirPods 4 AirPods Pro 2 or AirPods Pro 3 you should definitely check it out you just have to press on both of the stems at the same time and then you can access this feature it's actually pretty amazing now here's a really cool new feature that applies to everybody. So now inside of the music application, we have a brand new gesture to go forwards and back on a song. So now with iOS 26.1, you can do it without actually going into the now playing screen and without touching these buttons right there. How you do it is you simply swipe over and you can see you have an animation as well, along with haptic feedback to go to that next song or previous to go to the previous song. It's actually very satisfying and it's actually much quicker once you get used to it than tapping on that button or going into the now playing screen. And just for reference, I do have iOS 26.0 here and you can see there was no type of gesture system at all for going to the next song or the previous song. But if we do go into the now playing screen, we have a new animation here when it comes to switching to the next song or the previous song. So you can see that take a look at the text right here when I'm switching between songs where it shows the song name, it kind of just fades in. There's not really much of an animation, it'll just fade in. In, but now with iOS 26.1, check out the animation. It comes in from the side, and then we go back, it comes in from the other side. So it's a little bit more animated now and looks a little bit more, I don't know, more polished, I think, actually, in 26.1 with these new animations. And we have another animation change when it comes to auto mix. So the new feature where you mix songs into the next. If we go ahead and play the screen recording, you can see the difference in 26.0 on the left, 26.1 beta 1 on the right when it transitions into that song there's a subtle difference in the animation it's also a little bit slower than it was before now you might also notice in the same screen we have a new scrubber view down here so where you scrub between you know in the video that has a new look so it's a little bit more obvious that it's there than before so it's less liquid glass which could be kind of annoying for some people you know if you want that fluidity throughout iOS but you could see that the new little scrubber bar here is kind of all encompassing so the play buttons in there along with the mute and unmute button. So all of them are within the same bar now, whereas before the scrubber was down here separate from the mute button, which is over there on the right, and the play button, which was above it on the left. So it's a lot more compact now. Doesn't look as good because it does have the black background. It is more easy to see, I guess 
but it's a little bit more compact now and it takes up less space, which I think is good. And I just noticed this as well. Take a look at the buttons down at the bottom. There's a subtle little fade animation when I go to drag and change, you know, the playback position for this video, those fade in and fade out. They did not do that at all before. And staying in the music application, we have another change when we tap on the three dot menu in the now playing screen, we now have go to as an option before we only had go to album. And when you tapped on that, of course, it would go to the album of that song. But now you can see that we have go to and when you tap on this, it's a little drop down menu where you can now go to the playlist or you can go to the album or to the artist. So you have three different options and it's kind of this menu inside of a menu with that new glyph icon to the left. And there's also a subtle new animation for turning on and off haptics. Before there was no animation at all. It would just turn on and turn off and that button would change. But now there's a subtle animation. If you take a look at the glyph icon, to the left, you will see that the cross goes through it a little bit after. And also there's a subtle animation when you tap to turn music haptics back on. It's just the glyph that has a minor new animation there. Oh, and also one of the animations that drove people crazy on iOS 26.0 is when you would swipe up from the now playing bar to pull up that song. And you could see the animation was always broken, like in pretty much every iOS 26 beta, including the final release that was broken. It would just kind of come in from the top. It looked really janky and really bad kind of unpolished, but that's been fixed with iOS 26.1. So now when we do that, it comes up properly from the bottom and it smoothly kind of eases in to take up the full screen. In the phone application, we finally have liquid glass for the keypad. So before on iOS 26.0, we still had that gray behind the keys, which was the old design language for Apple, but now they're updated with that liquid glass design and you can see the little animation there as well. There was actually no animation whatsoever before when you tapped on a key and you could see with that liquid liquid glass looks like in dark mode for this keypad looks so much better. And that's not the only thing we got the liquid glass change for because also if we go into our lock screen and go to customize, we now have a change here as well. If you tap on the clock, when you go to customize the clock, this has been changed to liquid glass. So at the bottom, we had glass and solid and these little buttons right here, I guess it did have some liquid glass with the little toggle right there. But now it's a little bit different in iOS 26.1. And I do think this is bugged out because you can't really see it very well but we do have glass and solid options down at the bottom and they are much larger buttons now. So they take up much more room down there. And also the animation is a lot more apparent and less subtle than it was before. Also, you can see that font and color looks like it may have moved down a tiny bit. Also, the X in the top right now has a more liquid glass like background to it. And actually, I just changed to a darker wallpaper so you can see the change that I'm talking about a little bit easier. So it doesn't work as well on light colored wallpapers. I will be continuing to monitor this to see if Apple fixes that. I'm sure they will. They could see what it looks like down there in 26.1 now compared to iOS 26.0. Also, take a look at the selector where you select the color that you want. It no longer has that blue outline. It's more of a white outline now. And you'll also see that change for the selector. So when you choose your font style, you can see that the outline around the one that you have selected is now more of like a liquid glass, like white design, more transparent. Whereas before it had this really thick blue border around it, which didn't really match liquid glass. And also I'm not sure why, but this little rainbow text style is closer to the front now than it was before. And there might be some very minor changes to liquid glass with this update. I haven't really noticed a big difference in Safari or anywhere else, but there might be a subtle difference when you look throughout the OS. If we head into our settings and go into the phone section, and then we scroll down to hold assist detection, it's now a normal sized section with a normal sized toggle with the text underneath. Before it was more like the screen unknown colors down here where there are multiple options, but there was just one option and it looked really weird since it was so enlarged, but now it's been fixed and it's back to looking like a regular setting to turn on or off. And if we go back in our settings to the sounds and haptic section and then scroll down near the bottom, we have a slight word change to the reduce loud sounds option. So it now has an added little detail right there that says the original audio from songs, movies, and other media. Before, it just said while maintaining the quiet details of the original audio. So Apple expanded a little bit more to help us understand what this feature actually impacts. If we head into the Find My application and we go to a contact that we're sharing location with, or if we just go to one of our items like an AirTag, right there where it shows the last time it was updated, it now shows in green. Before, it kind of just blended in because it was gray, but now it shows in green.
screen to stand out a little bit more. And then we also have a change in the code according to Aaron P613. It looks like iOS 26.1 reintroduces rapid security updates, but it's now going to be named background security improvement. And it says this improves the security of your iPhone by installing security improvements and system files before they are available in iOS software updates. And then as far as the release notes go, there's not a lot mentioned in here. There are a few little differences in here, and I will leave this linked down in the description below, but nothing really too major in there. Now, as far as the performance goes on iOS 26.1 beta one, of course, I've only been using the software for a couple of hours now, but I have to say the performance feels pretty solid. I mean, it's hard to say right now, and I also would not really expect a major change in performance going from 26.0 even to 26.1. Typically, it takes until like the 0.3, you know, area somewhere around there to see a noticeable difference. However, we could be seeing a performance difference. I, like I'm saying, it's just too early to tell just yet. I will let you guys know in my weekly follow up video, my Apple Weekly series on Saturday. But so far, so good. And as far as battery life goes, that also could see an improvement with iOS 26.1, probably not with beta one, but with the, you know, throughout the beta stages and with the final release, we could see, you know, a nice increase to the battery life. However, you know, a lot of people with the iPhone 17 series are complaining about bad battery life, kind of forgetting that your device is still indexing and downloading a lot of stuff from the cloud, you know, for the first like week sometimes for some people, even longer, depending on how they use their phone. So, you know, battery life so far on 26.0 has not been bad for me and I would not expect it to be terrible on 26.1 beta one. It's probably actually going to get better throughout the beta stages and of course by the final release, but we'll see. So now when can we expect to see iOS 26.1 beta two? And I would say that we're most likely on a weekly release schedule right now. Typically with these 0.1 updates, Apple starts out on a one week release schedule. So if that's the case, we should be seeing the next beta still in September. So we could be seeing that on Monday, September 29th. Now there is always the possibility of Apple doing every two weeks to start with, but just based on history and based on the past, Apple has typically stuck to just one week between releases, aside from last year with Apple Intelligence, which of course was an anomaly. But we'll have to wait and see. I would not expect to see the final release of iOS 26.1 until late October, potentially even early November. However, it's most likely going to be near the end of October. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 26.1 beta one. A lot of pretty small changes, nothing really too significant with this update. However, I would expect features to continue coming throughout the beta stages because the point one update is always, it always has a lot of features, but not a ton of features. Like the point two and the point four updates are the ones where you get a ton of features, but there are still going to be quite a few new features with 26.1. And we will see those throughout the beta stages as long as you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts, and I will see you very soon.